Hi everyone, my name is King IV and this is an introduction to statistical analysis software. And I won't be saying that again, I'll just be calling it SAS as it's normally called. And it's a software by the SAS Institute. It's a very popular and common advanced analytics software. And really these are introductory lessons. And really in these lessons, I'm gonna be using base SAS 9.4 32-bit for these videos. I also teach at the University of Waterloo in computer system auditing and business analytics. And these are meant to be short instructional videos and aren't really meant to provide a full explanation on why we're performing these tasks. Uh, just because I want out of time and that's not really my my what I'm hoping to provide in these videos. So really I'm hoping to provide a basic understanding of SAS so that you can go and further explore it. So, they're going to be made up of seven lessons. What is SAS? Reading data, creating new variables, subsetting data, combining data, basic formatting, and then proc, freak, mean, and univariate, which are very powerful and uh, awesome procedures. So before we dive into actually using SAS, a little bit of the theory behind it, uh, this is basically how the SAS steps work together. So you have the data step which you'll see is the first rectangular box from if you go left to right. And really data step is really meant to create SAS data sets, sets. And really you can do filtering, you can create new formats or new labels or, or new components, but really it's meant to read raw data and SAS data sets to create new SAS data sets. And what I mean by raw data, these could be Excel documents, these could be databases elsewhere, these could be um, Excel files, CSV, a number of different components are just outside of SAS. And this creates a SAS data set, which basically is rows and columns are very useful and what SAS will use intuitively to run its programs. You can also run programs from raw data sets, but it is slightly more efficient to run it in SAS, SAS using SAS data sets. Then you have the PROC step which is the, basically the procedure which allows you to create reports, generate graphs, and allow you to really take the data and turn it into information. A little bit about the syntax. So you already know about a step, but a statement is one line of code and usually ends, and it's technically doesn't have to be one line of code, but I just put that as a, it's one set of one instruction is probably a better way of saying it. Ends with a semicolon, which tells us this is the end of this particular instruction. And an example would be data, new data which will tell us that there's going to be a new data set created, new SAS data set created called new data. And it's going to automatically be saved in this case, in the, the work, the SAS work data uh, library, which we'll talk about a little bit further in the lesson. And then there's a step, which is basically a set of SAS statements usually starts with a proc or data and ends with a run with a semicolon. So you can see examples down there for the data and then as well for the proc. And PROC is short for procedure. So let's get started with SAS. So here I have SAS 9.4 open. And before we dive into actually doing the programming in SAS, I'm gonna walk you through the different components. So we'll have the output window where all your outputs go. And then here you'll have the editor window where you can actually go and develop your SAS program, put your various SAS uh, steps in, you can save it and then it'll create the .sas, which is the SAS program that you can call upon later. And then as well, you have the log, which will describe all your actions after you've run and submit your submitted your code. And then you, as well, you have the explore window, which is super important, really useful to know. The mo one of the most important ones is gonna be this library. So you can double click the library. So the library is basically where your SAS, SAS, where all your data is held in these different libraries or different folder folders you can think of this folder or drawer of all your different data sets really useful so you can see here work is a t your temporary data folder which is blank currently empty right now it's always it's always going to be there uh, but as soon as you turn it off it'll actually delete every sas table that was created or sas data set that was created there sas user is the permanent one so if you say something there, it'll automatically be saved and you can use it next time. SAS help has a lot of great sample data sets. One of them that we're going to be using pretty often is this sashelp.cars. So you can see all the different components there. 
if you want to go back like you're stuck in this level there's always this level one level up one level but this menu is contextual to base depending on what you have open so you can see that there is no one menu open or you have this new SAS program that you can create so you go one level up and then there's all these different components which we'll dive into the results component that's really important it'll show you all the different results that you've created over time based off the SAS program that you've created so that's good so let's get started let's close this okay let's start with the data step so it's called data tutorial yeah tutorial oh okay there you go and then usually when you do data it'll ask you where do you want to source your data usually go set xyz i got the data from here but in this case what we're going to do here is we're just going to create an observation we're going to call it x equals one and then we're going to run it and then we're just going to print it which will allow us to then see the results of our data so here we're gonna you need to go proc print and then declare what data set you're looking at in this case i'm looking at tutorial and in theory i should be doing work dot tutorial because that's actually where the data is being currently stored but in this case it already defaulted so i don't need to worry about it and then we're gonna press run so let's highlight the code and let's click this running man and then click on submit and then you'll see here now you have one observation value one and then you'll see here the result as well and if i go to explorer and i go to library you'll see the work table right here as well so you can see the, the results of the table so that's good it's interesting uh, if i wanted to add another observation let's call it a is equal to 10 and i run that of you'll see here here's this the second result that was created you'll see x equals one a is equal to 10. that's good to know you can also do some basic functions but we'll dive a little bit further into this so let's say x times two you can do that run that and you'll see here it's performed the calculation and as well you can go if you want to go exponential so x squared let's just change this to a more interesting number let's go 10 and we run this you'll see here it does the exponential and if we go to log which normally i would do after each data step uh, after each time i run the code but just because it was more simple i didn't so you'll see here if i go to the very top you'll see here it'll tell you what steps sas read and then it'll tell you how many observations and how many variables which is always useful so you can always double check your what's actually being performed and you'll see here proc print data equals tutorial and then it's writing an html file and then it's gonna run it. And then you'll see here, again, we run the tutorial, you'll see here, one observation, two variables, et cetera, et cetera. So that's good, uh, but really you're most interested when there's actually an error. So if I don't put a semicolon here, and I try to run it, you'll also be able to tell because of the color coding. You see a run, or your normal SAS functions are, are not performing properly. I run this you'll see here it's still printed because it still stores the tutorial table it just didn't create the it didn't overwrite it so we go down here you'll see here here's an error and you'll see that there's an error in the code and uh, you'll need to take a look depending on what the actual errors and how you want to how you want to handle it and you'll see here it'll say that work tutorial may be complete when the steps stop there were no observations but three variables okay Perfect. Uh, the reason why there's three variables is because it didn't recognize that this run was actually like the stop stopping of the procedure, the stopping of the SAS set. So we can easily fix that by doing that. So that's that's good. Uh, we're gonna quickly go on to create some inputs uh, because we're gonna be talking about reading data in the next lesson. So if we wanna go input, if we wanna create our own data set. What we can do here is we can go input, let's call it A, B, and C. And all we have to do here go data lines and then what you'll see here the text is in yellow so let's go one two three and then you don't need to put a semicolon until the very end six seven eight nine technically you don't need the semicolon I just do it because it's good practice so you run that I should have three three by three table which I do there's all these different values that's good what happens if I want to go a b c instead of uh, for the column column C. Let's see what happens. 
Okay, so if I go, something weird happened, I put this dot instead. And what this dot means is that when you don't de de determine that it's a character, and you when you do data lines, it'll automatically assume it's numeric. And when numeric, when you get a non-numeric input for a numeric column, it's going to leave it as a dot, which basically means that's a null. And go go to the code, and you'll see here, this will tell you whether one means that there's an error and tells you which line it is. And then you'll see here line two, line three, there's continuously a lot of errors. So if I want to fix that, all I have to do here is go up here and declare a format. In this case, the format I'm going to declare is uh, character using the dollar sign. So I run that and now I have my column with A, B, and C. So I think I'm going to leave it there. But if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to comment in the comment section below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to check out the next lesson, which should be coming out shortly after. And I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.